Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and we're in Duelist Den today, and happy to be here. Haven't been in here for a month because we're having a very wet spring, and the uh, the water in the creek has just been too high for me to get across. But um, I went across today, and I went through the ford as high as it has ever been. So hopefully I can get back out. But I'm here now, and we're going to be shooting my 50 caliber flintlock rifle made by Dave Crispin. This is a uh, early Bucks County design. And if you watched the video from a couple of weeks ago, you saw me crowning the muzzle of this gun. And what I'm going to show you is what a crown muzzle does for you in terms of being able to load easily. So I'm going to start off by showing you how I loaded this gun before it was crowned. And then I'll show you how it works with a crown muzzle and we'll do some shooting so you can see it's just as accurate as it ever was. All right, this is one I envy uh, Hickok 45 because Glenn has his son John as a cameraman and director. And when you've got somebody listening on the outside, you catch stupid mistakes like this, which, believe me, you don't even realize you're making in the heat of the moment, and then you just see them later on on video when you can't dress back up drive out to the range and reshoot the whole thing. So I hope you'll forgive me. This is a coned muzzle, not a crowned muzzle. And I'm really sorry. So the process before coning the barrel was to measure out a charge of powder and uh, of course pour it in the barrel. And once that's done uh, take a grease patch, place it on the muzzle, then take a 490 round ball, get that centered on the patch, and then take a short starter and whack it to uh, get that ball started into the muzzle. So it takes a good palm whack. That's just to get it started in the muzzle. And then the long leg of the starter, whack it down to get it conformed to the bore. And after that, you can take a loading rod and send it all the way down. And that's, uh, that's the way I did it with this gun before coning the barrel. So now you've seen the loading procedure for an uncrowned muzzle, which of course is the way you get the barrels from the factory these days. And uh, now I'm going to show you the difference. And, and the big difference is none of this. You don't need a short starter. In fact, in uh, inventories of original shooting bags and you know legacies of, uh, of shooting accoutrements that have been left, you don't see many short starters. And the reason for that is because most guns in the 18th century were coned. And, and I'm not just making that up. Uh, if you know who Frank House is, he's one of the preeminent contemporary long rifle makers in the country. And he's also restored a lot of originals, more originals than I've ever examined. And he's examined the barrels very carefully because he makes his own barrels. He forges barrels by hand. And Frank told me that on most of the originals that he's examined to restore, the barrels were coned. And that allows you to start them a lot easier. So we're going to show you what the process is using a cone barrel. And it's essentially the same, except you don't need a short starter. Right? So we'll start off with the powder. And I'm using a 75 grain charge of 3F. Uh, this is, of course, a 50 caliber rifle. So, we get a measure full. Cap that back off. Alright, so, pour powder down. All right. Now, I'm going to take a, uh, a lube patch. This is a 0 0.018 thick pillow ticking patch. I'm going to pop it on there. I'm going to take a 490 round ball, as I said, 50 caliber. I'm just going to start it with my thumb. And I can just kind of push that right in. I'm going to take the ramrod. 
and I'm going to seat it. And there you go, no short starter. Now all I have to do is prime and fire. On one final point, I loaded that with just a single ball and patch, but this is a loading block. It's got five uh, patch balls already set up on it, and this speeds up the loading process quite a bit. And that's what I'm going to be loading from down on the range. So let's go, uh, let's go ring some steel. Well, we're here at the spin zone, and I'm going to be shooting at those, the flippers on the bottom row. So let's see how I do. Got one. Uh, let's see if I can get some more. Miss a little one. Let's see if I get the big one next to it. All right, gonna try the bigger one on the outside. It's about a three inch circle, I guess. Got him. I think I'll go back for the middle one again. All right, so that's a pretty small target, but let's see if we can get it at 25. Got it. Okay, so I've got two, uh, two miniature steel rams and one giant squirrel set up 25 yards out. Gonna be a little challenging for me, but we'll see if I can hit them. Okay, I'm gonna go for the, uh, the ram on the right first and we'll just try to take them in line. And we'll see. Okay, one ram down. Okay, one ram, one squirrel, both bit the dust. Last ram. <laughs> I am jinxed on the third shot. I do not get this. So what trip to Duelist Den would be complete without Wacky Evil Roy? 
So he's out there waiting for us. Let's give him what he needs. Got him, dead center. That was so much fun, I think I'll do it again. Perfect. Well, we'll finish up with the bad guy's view of the cone muzzle.